Welcome to Section 3 of the Reactive Microservice Design course. In this section, we will start diving into Reactive Microservices. This is the first part of two sections where we will explore the foundation of any Reactive Microservice. The form is how the underlying parts are molded to create the Reactive Microservice. At the lowest level, it all boils down to a message-driven architecture. In this section, we will introduce message-driven architectures understand the relationship between messages and asynchronous programming, and how to avoid get lost on callback, and finally make the ACME bank code easy to read with future composition. At its core, message-driven architecture means that an application is composed from autonomous components, which communicate with each other via messages. In this video, we will introduce message-driven architectures in general, discuss how they apply for distributed and local systems and their side effects. Message-driven architecture is very common in a distributed application, because each component sits on a different server, but they still need to work together. But the amazing thing about message-driven architecture is that it can be applied for local, non-distributed applications as well. This means that a local message-driven application, like this diagram, can send messages across components, as you can see on the diagram. This can easily become a distributed application only with some configuration required, but the application code should remain untouched. The main benefit, though, is that it makes it easy to write highly high-quality maintainable code, in other words, lowly coupled high cohesive and high testable code. The downside is that it requires a bit of experience to become comfortable with it. It is not straightforward at first, it seems like over-engineering, but once you experiment with it, it will feel like the proper way to implement a non-trivial application. So let's look at an example. Let's create two verticals. Vertical A will make a call to vertical B. On a non-distributed message-driven application, you would just do component.greeting and you get some output when you run the application. As you can see, it prints hello vertex. So let's now transform this application into message-driven architecture. Let's comment out this part and refactor it. Since we have two verticals, we need to deploy the second one as part of the start process of the first one. So we will say deploy vertical. And now once it's deployed, we send a message. For this we use the event bus and use address greetings. And we pass the message we want to send. If we now run the application, we have exactly the same result. However, we are now have message driven application that runs inside the same process. So now let's extend this code to work across processes or machines. In this case, we only need the message bus message to be sent. So let's do this. Now we start the vertical B apart as an independent process. And now we start the vertical A where we were working. You should now look at the logs and notice and observe that we have now two members in our cluster. So the application is now complete and you don't see anything. But that's expected. You don't see output because the output is now handled on the vertical B itself. So the second process is doing all the work. You should now know that when you implement a message-driven architecture, your application can scale outside the current machine to the network. This comes with a price that at first it might seem as over-engineering, but you will learn that it pays off once your application scales.